All right, so 7-4 day two and 7-5 day one are so closely related. We learn 7-4 day two in order to do a good job on 7-5 day one that I'm going to go ahead and put that in today's notes, both pieces. And I think you're going to find it's probably not a very long lesson anyway. Um, and then you won't have to watch a video lesson for tomorrow. You'll already know how to do it. So uh, away we go. Um, you do need a calculator. So if you don't have your own, get the Chromebook out. Have the TI-84 Rapid Identity up. Um, it can be just a scientific calculator. It doesn't have to be a graphing calculator. But of course, I'm going to show you how to do everything up here on the graphing calculator. So that might help you out. But yeah, have that handy. Definitely want a calculator today because that's what today is about. Today is about how do we get the calculator to do some of these logarithms, if not all of these logarithms for us. Because we already know there are a lot of these that don't work out nice. You know, um, we ran into that yesterday. In fact, let me put one up here real quick. That's not going to show up on our power chart. 3 to the something is 87? Ah, uh -uh. that's not going to be there. So we can't say, well, we're not going to know what that is. And in the old days, when dinosaurs roamed the earth and I was in high school, we had a table in the back of our book of logarithms. And there were like 100 pages of just logarithm values that had been calculated. And what's so super cool about a calculator is it has this itty bitty little tiny chip in it that holds all of that information. So now you guys have calculators that will allow you to do this. So our day two lesson for 7-4 is figuring out how do we use a calculator for this stuff. And then 7-5 day one is solving and using this method to do this. And it all comes from this little thing called the change of base formula. Now, you probably didn't notice there are a couple of buttons for logarithms on your calculator because we haven't used them yet. And they are, there's L-O-G right there, right to the right. I keep saying right. Just to the left of the 7, L-O-G. Now, that's only one base, though. What is L-O-G the base? 10. So you still couldn't do the one I had up there, logarithm base 3 of 87. The one beneath that, that looks like capital L, capital N, they do that. It's supposed to be lowercase l and lowercase n. They do that because some people would think it looked like the word in if they did it. But this is, it's called the natural logarithm. We're going to learn about that one in 7.6, so next week. So right now, we've got, we know we have this base 10 button on our calculator. And the problem is, not everything's base 10. Some of the stuff we've done is base 10. So we've seen logarithms with many bases, and that LOG base, or LOG key on the calculator is just base 10. So that's all we have. To evaluate a logarithm with any base, we use what's called the change of base formula. In fact, you'll still see these problems on the ACTs because some calculators can change the base themselves. Most cannot. So we need to use the change of base formula. Now, this is going to look awful, but once I explain it, everything will make perfect sense. This is the change of base, change of base formula. So we have something we have to find, and it's not a base 10. Can we still use the calculator for it? Absolutely. We just have to know the change of base formula, and then we can find it. So for any positive numbers, m, b, and c, with b not equal to 1, c not equal to 1, we talked about that. Raising 1 to any power is nothing fun, so we need to change it up. What you do for logarithm base b of m is take the logarithm of the big number that you're trying to evaluate, and I mean size-wise. Remember, we have a little subscript for our base. So logarithm of the large number you're trying to evaluate and divide it by the logarithm of the base. So the little itty bitty number. 
the subscript. Now, it works every time. So if we take the logarithm of the m and divide it by logarithm of the base, b, we will get the correct logarithm. Now, let me go back a second to this one. This is not on the power chart. So if I want to punch this one into the calculator, I'm going to have to punch in log of 87 over log of 3. And then I want to show you that it actually works. So let's go into the calculator and punch in log of 87, but make sure you finish off the parentheses so the calculator knows. Stop here. Give me that. Divided by log of 3. So we have to finish off those parentheses. Enter. So just like that, the calculator tells us, hey, here's what you do. You take 3, and you'd raise it to that power I just gave you, and it'll give you 87. Now, at first, you're like, that can't work. I mean, we just took something that had a base of 3 and changed it into base of 10 magically, and that's going to happen? Well, let's see. If I take 3 and raise it to the answer I just got, well, look at that. It's 87. Now, it doesn't matter if we use LOG or LN. This is common logarithm, natural logarithm. But we haven't even talked about natural logarithm yet. So better for us right now to stick with LOG. As long as you use the same logarithm for the top and the bottom of your fraction, it's going to work every single time. So 7 4 day 2 is really about learning to punch these into your calculator. That's what it is. So this says, what is the value of each expression? And I'm not going to do the snail shell thing because I want to use my calculator. Log of the big number, the large number we're trying to evaluate, divided by the logarithm of the small subscript. So it was large number over smaller number. And then I just punch that into the calculator, making sure that I use my parentheses. Log of 27 parentheses divided by log of, was it 81? Thank you. I don't want to have to scroll back and forth here. 0.75. Now, that tells me we absolutely could have done this one by hand, but hopefully you saw that when you saw the, the 81 and the 27. Everybody remember those are powers of 3? So we could have done this one by hand, but that's not what today is about. Today is about the ones that don't work out nice. This is definitely a doesn't work out nice problem. 5 to the something is 36. That's not something nice. So log of the large number we're trying to evaluate divided by logarithm of the small base. So log 36, parentheses, divided by log of 5. Now, logarithms typically don't work out nice. I mean, that's the reason we're using the graphing calculator. Because logarithms have been done since the pyramids, the expected amount of rounding is going to be, and I know it sounds like a lot, but 10 thousandths, four decimal places. Logarithms are usually written to four decimal places. So 2.2266 with rounding. Remember, you'll go to the fifth position, and you'll say, is that a 5 or bigger? If it's a 5 or bigger, you round up. If it's smaller than a 5, then you round down. So 2.2266. Now, I tell you that, and then you go look up your answers in the back of this book and sometimes they only go to three. And that's just this book because they didn't want to pay people to type more numbers. So typically it's four decimal places for any logarithms. All right, I've been yakking long enough. I need your help here with 3a. How are you going to punch that one in? Agreed, everybody? Log 32 over log 8? All right, well, let's get it.
So 1.6667 with rounding to four places. Again, it's checkable. We can think about snail shelling and say 8 to the something is 32 and, and plug it in. But I know you're already doing B, so what are you typing in? Again, the parentheses are really important. So always stop to see, hey, did I get the parentheses there? Oh, this one is interesting. We'll have to go to 2.0850 to round it up. So notice how rounding skills have suddenly become important. You know, some people tend to ignore those. You can't ignore them anymore. We have to go to the four decimal places. So there's our change of base formula right there. And like I said, that would have been the end of 7.4, which leaves us plenty of time to do some 7.5. And if it weren't connected to what we were just doing, I would have said, no, I'll just make a video. In fact, I already made the video, and it's ready to go. But this is directly linked to what we have to do in 7.5. So I'll come back and show you the assignment for this one later. But let's go ahead and get our notes taken for... 7.5 and get that out of the way. Kind of worried about this. I have to have two files open at one time and it doesn't like that. Yay! Alrighty. I love this getting ready. I love this. So we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic equations because we're learning how to solve. That's what algebra is. Finding all the solutions to anything that's out there to solve. And you want a TV game show. Whew. You're going to get some money. Which prize would you choose and explain? Well, look at A. You're walking away with $10,000 every week. So week one, you got ten grand. Week two, now you've got a total of twenty grand. Week three, grand total of 30000 I better put a little comma here or something so it breaks it up. That's not bad. Exactly. The rest of your life. You know, it's kind of like Publisher's Clearinghouse. $5,000 every month, every, every week for the rest of your life. This one says $10,000. Prize B. Oh, this is a rip. A penny today? Two cents tomorrow? Oh, four cents the next day. So what are they doing each day? And most people would say, no way. I'm not going to take that. Well, let's see. If we start off with a penny and we double it, there's day two. Double it again. Day three. Four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, see what's happening, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Which one should you take? Yeah, the one where it's doubling. In fact, if we keep going and we go to 365 days, it's such a big number that your calculator can't even do it anymore. It says overload. It's too big. So even though it starts off very, very small, here's what's really happening. They're raising it to powers of 2 to multiply by every time. This was times 2 to the 1. Then it was times. 2 squared, then it'd be 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th. Exponential stuff grows much faster than multiplication. Much faster. So, the question is, how does this link up to our change of base stuff? Well, we have to solve exponential equations. And that's what this one is about. So, any equation that contains b to the something, in this case we've got b to the cx, 
such as a equals b to the cx, where the exponent includes a variable, is called an exponential equation. We just have to figure out how to solve them. John, put the phone away or I'll take it away. Our essential understanding, you can use logarithms to solve exponential equations. That's what they are for. You can use exponents to solve logarithmic equations. Well, how? I mean, that's what I would want to know. How is this working? Well, let's get to it. Now, first, we do already know how to do some of these. Because when I look at this and I see 16 and 8, I think, wait a second, on my power chart, those are both in the 2 row. 2 to the something. 8 is 2 to the 3rd. 16 is 2 to the 4th. Oh, yeah, we did these the other day. Then to raise a power to a power, what do you do? Multiply. And this is where we said we don't need the big twos. The big twos are already the same. I need 12x to equal 3. And then I divide both sides by 12. And I get 1 fourth. This method is called equating the bases. That doesn't look like a G. It just looks squiggly. Which hopefully you're saying, oh yeah, I remember we did that the other day. We already know how to do that. Can we use that same method for this one? What base is small enough that it's going to work for 27 and 81? Yeah. So this will be 3 to the 3rd for the 27 to the 3x equals 3 to the 4th. Then what do you do? Multiply these little buggers. And don't need the big threes. Last step. Yeah. Totally checkable. You can take the little four ninths and put it up here and do, in fact, let me do that. 27 to the three times four ninths. There it is, you know, and you can make sure that it absolutely works. But here's the problem. We're going to find numbers that we can't get the same base for. That's where we have to use our change of base formula. So when bases are not the same, we can solve an exponential equation by taking the logarithm of both sides of the equation. It's just like anything else we do in algebra. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So if m and n are positive and m equals n, then it's perfectly fine to take the logarithm of both sides. Now, we get to choose the base. That's a pretty big deal. Because here it comes. 15 raised to some power is 285. Uh, not something nice, it's not. So I'm starting with this. Notice I'm leaving some space. That'll take some getting used to. Leave a little space there. Now, I need to gain access to that 3x. Because I can't solve this unless it says 3x equals something. So I try to figure out, how can I get rid of this 15? Well, the good news is, we know logarithms now. If we do this, does everybody see that the bases match? And if the bases match, the logarithm just drops out like it was never there. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And I know that looks kind of weird because the log is in the wrong place, but I want to make sure that you can see that's what we do for both sides. Now, when we do that, this is gone. And just today, you learned how to punch the right side into the calculator. So this would be 3x 
equals log of 285 divided by log of 15, but don't punch yet. We want to punch this in all at one time if possible because we'll still have to finish this up by dividing by 3. We don't want a rounding error in any of this. So I'm going to have to be careful. If you're a person that likes to punch everything in at once, you're going to have to use outside parentheses for that little logarithm fraction and then divide it by 3. Or you could do this in two steps. We can punch in log 285 divided by log 15. Get an answer and then divide it by 3. But notice I didn't stop and write anything down because I might produce a rounding error if I did that. So this is 0 0.6957. Now if I check this and I use 0 0.6957, am I going to get perfectly 285? No. Log 285 divided by log 15. Oh! I just went ahead and wrote down 5.7 without looking at the next spot. Thank you, Emma. Going too fast. 0 0.6958. Okay, either way, if we use the 5.7 or the 5.8, is it going to come out perfectly to 285? No. But if we do this, 15 to the, and we had 3 times our answer, and that's second and negative, then it will. So if we just check it with our four decimal places, it might be a little bit off. But if we pull it out of the calculator and just keep using our answer, then we should be able to see it perfectly. All right, so let's look at the got it. Oops, I'm going to need some space. All right, how do we get rid of the 5 so we can gain access to the 2x? Logarithm base 5. Do we know how to punch in logarithm base 5 of 130? Change the base formula, right? Log of the big number you're trying to evaluate divided by the logarithm of the small number, which is the base. And then we have to divide by 2. All right. So with this one, let's just say, like I talked about before, you're one of the people that wants to just punch this in as one big long string. Then you're definitely going to have to keep track of your parentheses here. So parentheses for the big logarithm fraction. So that tells the calculator, do all that stuff first, then divide it by 2. 1.5122. Again, if you wanted to check it, just use the answer you already have in the calculator. Now, for 2B, it says, why can't you use the same method in problem 1 to solve problem 2? Well, notice how the bases are different in all of these? We took logarithm base 5 for this one because it made sense, because this was a 5. We took logarithm base 15 in this one because then they're going to cancel out. We'll be able to use our inverses there. So, they had different bases. That's why we didn't use the same method. Different bases. 
All right, so with problem three, we really should check first and see, is there something we could do with bases of four and 6,000 that would be equal to each other? But 6,000 is such a huge number to work with, most of us would just say, I'm gonna use logarithms for this one. All right, so what are you gonna do? Log base four of both sides. What does that do for you? How do you punch in logarithm base four of 6,000? Oh, careful. Yes, there's a lot of numbers there, aren't there? It's like a tongue tire. Wouldn't quite be done though, right? What are you going to do with your answer? Mm -hmm. Divide by three. All right, so log 6,000. Whoops. Divided by log of 4. And divided by 3 if you're using parentheses for everything. So 2.0. Nine, what would we have to do with that one, everybody? One eight, two point zero nine one eight. Again, our rounded answer wouldn't come out to exactly six thousand, but it would be super duper close. All right, I can see these are too easy because lots of you just have your head down and you're working like crazy already. So why don't you do them and I'll do them and let's hope I don't punch something in wrong. Or maybe I will on purpose. <laughs> Double check. Stay with us here, Mom. Bill, this is good stuff. Pay attention. So far, so good? You don't suppose our calculator will take logarithms of decimals, do you? Well, of course it will. It's a fantastic little machine. So we need logarithm base what? Exactly. So let's just say we're not sure. You know, does the calculator do this stuff with decimals? Nothing like trying it to see. You know, give it a try. Log 400 divided by log of 5.2. And divide that whole thing by 3. It didn't yell at me and say, you know, bad domain, error in the domain, syntax error, anything like that. It actually calculated it. So 1.2114. So yeah, it'll take care of decimals. Now, seems like these were pretty basic today. So every once in a while, you know what the book's going to do again. It's going to give you one of them that's out of the box. I want you to write this one down. No, it's not a word problem yet. So, you know, you've got those extra lines on the side of the paper, all that kind of stuff. 
So the book says to themselves, you know, these book writers, they're kind of mean. I think I got them with this one. I don't think they're going to be able to figure out how to do this. To which I say, you don't know my students. I'll bet my students can figure out the one step they need to do to get this to look like all the other problems you gave them today. Yeah, that's all we have to do. We have to expose this base in order to take logarithms. Otherwise, this is exactly what you've been doing today. Logarithm base 3, logarithm base 3. But it's got a little more going on at the end, doesn't it? Because we're not just going to be able to divide this time. So we're going to have to figure out what that is, and we're going to have to add 1. Get all of that together and then divide by 2. So it's a little more complicated to punch in. So this one I would definitely do in pieces. There's going to be way too many parentheses to keep track of here. Log of 71, parentheses, divided by log of 3, parentheses, enter. Plus 1, enter. Divided by 2, enter. 2.4400. Zero, zero. Um, I will tell you at, was it 4400, zero, zero, everybody? Come on, Blue. In the pre-calculus level, if you don't put the zeros and the problem said round to the ten thousandths, then you're going to lose the points because you have to know that ten thousandths means four decimal places. If it just says solve and you write 2.44, you're fine. You're fine. All right, everybody. That's going to be my stop in place because that I thought matched perfectly with what we did with 7 4 day 2. And speaking of 7 4 day 2, I got to give you the assignment for that one. Tomorrow you'll just work on what we did now. I don't know if you want me to see, do you want that assignment now too? So this is the one for today give you a chance to write that down and then we'll talk about whether or not you want me to show you the seven five day one assignment right now or if you just want to wait until tomorrow and look it up on Schoology or what you want to do. Now we know these are not difficult and we know they're not going to take a lot of time. So everybody should be doing these assignments. You are all capable of this. Oh, and the question that always comes up. No, there's no graphing in this, so you don't need graph paper for these. We did our, our graphing earlier. We'll do a little more graphing in 7.6, but we're done with our graphing. So this is today's using that change base formula. Now, sometimes you'll be able to solve by equating bases. If you can, you should do that. But we're never going to go back to, oh, let's put this side in as y sub 1 and this side in as y sub 2 and see where they hit each other. <laughs> we found out how to solve them today. We're going to use that. So when it says use a graphing calculator to solve, well, yeah, we kind of are. You know, we're using the change of base formula, but we're not going to graph. Anybody need more time to write? Okay. I think I'll also show you the 7 5 day 1 assignment in case you just want to write it down to there. Anybody still need more time to write down the 7 4 day 2 assignment? Yep, there's a couple people writing like crazy. OK. 
Okay, could I show seven five day one now? All right. So this will be tomorrow's assignment. Again, no graphing. We're going to solve using the change of base formula when we have to. But don't forget, equating the bases is a possibility too. I wonder if I can get them both up there at once. Maybe I just should have done that to begin with. Can you guys see it or does it need to go up? Okay, in the back, everybody's okay? You can see it? All right, good. 